You know, when I heard I was an oppressed, marginalized, and uh, just attacked group of people in America, I really expected a lot more oppression. I'm a little underwhelmed. I'm a little disappointed, you guys. I, I am I am genuinely hurted. Because, you see, I was told, I was told that especially in red states, especially where, you know, the Republicans are, you know, you're not going to get really treated well as a fat person. You can't eat alone in a restaurant. No, no, no. People will judge you. The waiters, the waist that's going to treat you like shit. You're not going to get good food. People are going to stare at you. Oh my God. Yes. No one's going to help you out. Uh, if you get on an airplane, oh my God, the airlines, they're not going to help you. Everything's going to be torture. Guys, I just, I just got through traveling on my own. As many of you know, uh, I just went to Texas. Shout out to the fan that recognized me. Just have to put that out there. It's Listen, this is my one claim right now, okay? Um, I traveled around the USA by myself last weekend. And folks, I stepped up to, by the way, shout out to Southwest Airlines. Um, not sponsored, but let me tell you something. They are just really nice. They were nice to everyone. I'm actually going to plan to only fly through them from now on. Straight up. Shout out to No System. Just going to put that out there because uh, they're the ones that flew me out there. They're my, my job and I love them. So definitely go buy their shit. But uh -huh, uh -huh. I walk up to Southwest Airlines the morning of my first flight. And um, not only did the girl just greet me with just the most darling of attitudes. It was early in the morning. She immediately, without questioning, without anything, she upgrades my seat, you guys. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know about this. And if you saw my last week's live stream, you know about this. But yeah, she literally immediately upgraded my seat. She didn't just upgrade my seat. She gave me pre-boarding. So what pre-boarding is, for those of you that don't know, and I rarely fly, so I didn't know, is you're right behind the folks in the wheelchairs and the people with the baby carriages. So you're allowed to get on. And in Southwest Airlines, you get to pick any damn seat you want. So I, the marginalized, oppressed, fat woman that I am, literally got to cut the line of hundreds of other people and march my fat ass wherever I want to go. Okay, so I had a window seat every time. Not only that, they give you this handy dandy little ticket. And she said, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go in, you're gonna get behind the folks in the wheelchairs, you're going to get on the airplane. She checked in my bag and she said, this is your uh, carry on, obviously, the other one I had. She said, you're gonna take that with you. She went through the whole spiel. Obviously, she's done this once or twice. So she made sure I was covered. She's like, see this ticket? You're gonna lay it in the seat right next to you so no one has to bother you so that, miss, you can sit comfortably your whole flight. And I first thing I thought was, well, damn. Not only that, but across the entire airport, no matter what airport I was in, random strangers complimented me, namely for my hair. Um, I got a lot of compliments that whole weekend, okay? Airport staff consistently asked if I needed help across the board. Um, I mean, a woman my size, it's very kindly of them. So I'm just, I was waiting for it. Every restaurant I went to, no one stared. It was accommodating. People were friendly. Now, see, I live in North Cackalacka, North Carolina. I call it North Cackalacka because we think we're funny. And there's a lot of fat people here, a lot of them. And I guess I had gotten used to, you know, at least here. And I assumed maybe it's because this is where I live. So it must be different elsewhere. I went to Austin, Texas, guys. Austin is a party city. 
Austin is where you've got festivals and other things. So yeah, there's a lot of skinny people. Almost none of them stared at me. The only complaint I have, the only complaint I have, and I was, so I was so annoyed by this, I actually Googled it because I assumed it was just because I was fat and I wasn't going to say a word. When it was just because I thought I was fat, I was like, you know what, bitch, your ass is too big. Just deal with it. I know my ADHD is going haywire, but I have to tell this story. So when I was on the flight, because my flight took me from North Carolina to Baltimore to Texas. Right. Which, mind you, in Baltimore, I sat down alone, had a beautiful breakfast. Nobody bothered me. Everyone was delightful. And that's in Baltimore. But anyways, no shade Baltimore, but I mean, come on. We know. I get on my flight. Now, if any of you have been on a flight in the last four years, you probably know, especially specifically on 737s, you'll know that you want to make sure you are completely empty in your system before getting on the flight. Right? Right. Here's why. So I had flown to Vegas in 2018, okay? In 2018, I flew to Vegas and I had to use the bathroom on, uh, was it? Matthew, ask Ray, what did we fly on to Vegas? Was it Frontier? How dare he do what I told him to do? Either way, it was the green uh, affordable airlines because they were cheap oh let me tell you that was a tight squeeze and I was like 80 pounds less at the time <sighs> anyways so I was still able to fully use the bathroom it was uncomfortable but I was able to fully use it it was slightly smaller than the standard stall you'd see at like a Walmart I would say about that smaller uncomfortable but bearable fast forward to me being on that airplane on the way to Texas, which I was so annoyed at the time because I am a millennial, I wanted to use my phone. I wanted to use the internet. And I looked up on the airline uh, menu and it said for $8, you could buy Wi-Fi. I had $8. So yes, I was that person. It was a four hour flight, I wanted to read. And I didn't download any books, I wanted to read my manga. Anyways, about two hours, give or take, maybe even only an hour and a half, after doing what I thought was the smart thing and going potty, making sure I was all set, I suddenly need to use the ladies' room again. Oh, shit. Well, I'm going to have to suffer. So I get up. I make my way to the bathroom. And. I get there and I'm looking at it. I think I have a measuring tape here, but I'm going to be very frank with you guys. The stall was literally the length of my shoulders. I know because I walked in like this and I was like, oh no. And the hilarious flight attendant behind me says, you got this. I had to scoot and I was like, uh-uh. But I, I tried, so I backed in, and I tried to close the door. Claustrophobia, because I have claustrophobia. I'm getting, I'm getting issues everywhere. And I was like, you know what, bitch? You're too fat, go sit back down. And I had no problem, if I was too fat, that's on me. So I go and I sit back down. But I had paid that $8 for internet. I was gonna use it. So. I'm sitting back down, I Google it. Because I had noticed a couple of people get up to go to the bathroom and either they took an extraordinarily long time, I would say maybe there was four people on the whole flight that went to the bathroom, at least in the front of the airplane. <clears throat> they either took an extraordinarily long time or extraordinarily quick. That was very weird to me. There was never the normal five to 10 minutes of bathroom time. No, no, they were either in there like a minute, two, or they were in there for like a while. 
And I was like, why? And so I just, I bapped into Google. Why are airline, and I didn't even get to type the T. Google finished it for me. Why are airline toilets suddenly so much smaller? And apparently, and I will hopefully, if I can get the exact article I found last weekend, I'm going to put it up here. Apparently, a few years ago, I believe, if I'm recalling correctly, <laughs> you know what? Safe rather than sorry. I'll do it right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Fancy Google girl that I am. I know somewhere one of my friends is going, oh my gosh, she's using Google. Whatever. You know what? Gets the job done. Airlines are shrinking the size of their toilets in an effort to squeeze more passengers in. Now, what I want to make sure is I get the right one. Now, this is across all 747 flights. And they actually show this really, uh, I'm going to not show it this way. I'm going to put the picture up here of these men who I guarantee are taller than me. Um, <clears throat> it's becoming a tight fit in the loo for 35,000 feet these days. At 35,000 feet, as passengers are shoehorned into airplanes. Airlines are shrinking the size of their toilets in an effort to squeeze more passengers in. But as these pictures show... It's becoming a tight fit. Oh, this poor man. And here's why. American Airlines, I was right, it was American Airlines, estimated that they could add an extra 390 million pounds. So this is from, this is a uh, British uh, newspaper. A year by making smaller bathrooms. Are you ready? The new toilets are 24 inches wide. This is the whole entire bathroom. 10 inches smaller than those on airlines older than 737 models, which allows 12 more passengers. So, because some, one, I'm going to acknowledge them even though I really shouldn't. Said it was just because me complaining I was fat. Because I would shut up if it was just me being fat. But when I posted this on my Facebook, whining and bitching, what I found hilarious is a very skinny friend of mine had just gotten back from Disney the week before. She couldn't even get in to wash her toddler's hand. Like, she could not bend down and change her toddler's diaper or wash her toddler's hands in this tiny-ass bathroom. And I was just absolutely floored by that. So that was my only complaint. I just thought, you guys, in case the next time you were on a flight on a 737 and you need to use the bathroom, remember my face. And remember my story. And remember, it doesn't matter how fat or thin you are, it ain't gonna happen. And I just felt so bad because the people I feel really bad for in that situation are, one, super tall people, and two, the flight attendants. Those people are in the air all day long, sometimes up to 12 hours. That is their employee bathroom. And I just, mm. But back to the original topic at hand. I was told for the last few years that travel was the utmost, most difficult for fat people. And I just don't see it. I don't see it. I'm disappointed. I wanted to be able to throw a rainbow haired fit and dang it, it got taken away from me. So maybe it's just anecdotal. I, I provided video and photos of my very comfortable flights. I never had to worry about anyone squeezing in next to me. I never had to worry about bothering anyone when I was boarding and unboarding. Also, lots of lovely folks wanted to help me get off that plane, whether it be uh, helping me get my bags, making sure I was okay. And again, I got offered multiple times to get carted around those airports. I didn't, did it all myself, but 
Oh, and also, Southwest again, even when I missed my flight on the way back home, you guys are pretty good about that. Seriously, guys, if you're going to fly, go through them. Not sponsored. Again, like I said, I just, I like to compliment companies that do a really good job and make me happy. So there you go. But I, I just, this isn't an exciting video. This isn't a hard hitting one. This was just me telling you guys like it is. And seriously, I kind of feel like the whole oppression while traveling, it's kind of bullshit. That's all I had to say for now, guys. I'll see you in the next one. And uh, this is my first video since I've been back uh, from Texas, guys. And I had a great time in Texas. I I will say uh, if you've been, you watched my latest live streams, you'll see that the angle has changed and that's because my boss gifted me this really cool uh, camera. So until I can afford the rig for my DSLR camera, I'm, I'm super stoked to have it because then I'm going to have like a multiple view. It's going to be really fun. But <clears throat> I just want to thank everybody for all of the support. I have over 6,000 of you now and I am just floored over that. I will say that um, I think uh, a lot of folks warned me. I didn't think it would happen so quickly, but mm, here we are. I believe I have been officially shadow banned and I'm not even upset because you know what? That means I must be doing something right. I also want to thank my now eight patrons. Oh, um, I want to let you guys know if you want to see my uploads early, uh, if you want to see some now bonus content that I'm going to be uploading only to my Patreon, whether it be NSFW artwork, I am actually going to start doing reaction videos only for my patrons, partly because I'm afraid if I put them on YouTube, I can get copyright strikes. So they're going to be only on my Patreon. Um, the, I have contests going on. I have a giveaway that is going to be ending at the end of this month. Uh, you only have to join my Patreon, any tier to join in on it. It's going to be getting a free print and a free keychain giveaway. And I want to thank all of my patrons. I want to thank John Quinn, Emile DeVry, Sherry Malosky, Ide, Maria, Danielle Mariando, Anna Mae Chan and Panda Bear. You guys are amazing. You definitely make all of this much easier. If you love what I do, if you want to support me, uh, do consider becoming a patron today, guys. You would make my day. Um, also, shout out to No System. If you like what you see me wearing, I made sure to post all of the items I'm wearing in the video. I made sure to kind of deck myself out a little more because my fingers are tiny. But sometimes I can wear really cool rings and I decided to just, you know, shoosh it up today. Um, you can find me at all of these social media uh, locations. Support me on all of them. And guys, uh, I'm going to start saying, if you have any suggestions for what you want me to cover, anything that I'm missing, because I know that uh, I've got a couple of more things coming. Things like, you know, uh, my experience as a person of size in the medical field and, and some things that the body positivity movement has gotten right. Uh, but beyond that, I'm wanting to know if there's anything else in the body positivity movement that you guys want me to cover before I move on, because I'm going to admit we're getting ready to move on from it. Um, but just let me know what you guys want to know. Otherwise, I just, again, I'm, I'm super grateful for all of you. If you guys just are here at all, thank you. Thank you for the support. This has been a really amazing experience already. And I'm grateful for every like, comment, subscription. Um, so yeah, if you like my stuff, like, comment, subscribe, share. I have no qualms about that. Uh, if you want to react to my stuff, I have no qualms about that either. And um, remember to tell the people that you care about that you love them and to be safe. So guys, I love you. Be safe. Bye.